Bob, to understand the nature of consciousness, one question we can ask is, can consciousness be derived from non-biological systems, make a computer with the sufficient complexity, and by force will have consciousness, the inner awareness in silicon? Do you think that's possible? Maybe. It's oh, a, it's a funny question because we know so little. I mean, I know that when I put my Apple Mac to sleep at night, it doesn't dream, even though it's asleep. Or if it dreams, it doesn't tell me about it. Whether computers, or for that matter, trees, can be conscious is one that we don't really have the information um, to resolve yet. I mean, I think as interesting as the question of could they become conscious, for example, when computers become even more and more complicated, there's also the question of have they been conscious since the first Atari came out? So let's take those in pieces. We, we know that humans are conscious. That's all we're sure about in terms of consciousness. But we know that there's massive amounts of the human brain that you don't need. So we know that we don't need a brain as complex as ours to be conscious because, for example, children who have certain neurologic disorders will have half of their cortex removed as children. And they re grow up remarkably unimpaired generally, but certainly have full consciousness. We can remove half the regions of the cortex without impairing consciousness at all. We don't need much of our brain to be conscious, although we can make very small lesions of the brain and destroy it. So we don't know how much of the brain we need. It might be, and I know lots of people will disagree with me, it might be that our computers are already more complex than the most minimal portion of the brain that we require to have consciousness. Clearly our computers are nowhere near the complexity of the brain as a whole, although that's within sight. I don't know if we're talking five years or 10 years or 25 years, but it's not much further than that before we'll have computers that are well, as complex in terms of how much memory space they have, how much connectivity they have. But is that all it takes? I mean, I don't see any evidence that that has anything to do with it. We sort of, that, that's sort of like saying, you know, I used to ask people if you had a big enough encyclopedia, could you imagine it being conscious? And everybody says, you mean a, a paper encyclopedia? I say, yeah, but I'm talking about like 10,000, 100,000 volumes and 2,000 indexes to, the, to it and, and people running around editing it all the time. And they say, a paper encyclopedia? I say, yeah. And they say, no, there's no way. And the reason they say that is because we understand paper. We understand there's no, there's no degrees of freedom left. I think when we talk about computers, there's this magical piece that we don't understand. And whenever we have a hole, a magical hole in our understanding, we can say that could be consciousness. I call it a conflation of ignorances. <laughs> so we know nothing really at a deep level about how quantum mechanics works. And we don't understand how consciousness works. So maybe they're causally related. There's things that computers do that we don't understand how they do it. And there's things the mind does that we don't understand how they do it. And so maybe, maybe a computer can be conscious. Or with, with computers, it's, it can almost be the reverse, where it says the, the mind is a processing or, uh, organ. It's a computational, and, and computers are computational. So you build in enough complexity, enough parallel processing, that over time, however many decades it may take, that when you get that sufficient level of, of, of processing power, then consciousness will, will fall out by default. That's the argument. Absolutely possible. I mean, because we know so little about what causes consciousness, what, I mean, we know that brains produce it, that people with brains have it. You can damage the brain and destroy the consciousness. But we don't know that it has anything to do with the computing power of the brain. I mean, when I go to sleep at night, and at some points in the night appear to lose consciousness completely, I don't see a lot less computing going on in the brain. Mm. 
I see information processing. I see memories being accessed and, and reactivated. I see them being strengthened. I see them being integrated with other memories. So why am I not conscious there? I mean, why is it that I can take out a huge portion of the brain and it's still conscious, but I can flip a little switch in the brain and become unconscious? I mean, what if you built an entire brain that just lacked parts of the hippocampus involved in the regulation or parts of the thalamus involved in the regulation of the wake sleep cycle, it could be 10 times more complicated than a human brain and, and, asleep still, all the time. and asleep and unconscious all the time. But maybe in some ways an equally important question is how do we know that they're not? How do we know that this table isn't sitting here thinking, what an arrogant bunch of objects those are, so I don't have a mouth, so I don't have hands, so I can't express my thoughts, but I hate that light on this table. And when Stickle goes like that, it really hurts. Mm -hmm. If a computer was conscious, how would we know it? People think that Hal in 2001 was conscious. I don't think so. I've got computers that talk to me in the lab. I've got computers that have emotions that react to certain things by activating certain innate patterns to protect itself. I know that if I'm not doing anything that's really demanding of it, that it'll do a little bit of housekeeping that might process some of its memories in the background like I do. Maybe the computers have been conscious all along. So as important as the question, which I guess is almost a philosophical question of could a computer be conscious, there's sort of a scientific question of how would we know it? And it's not a trivial question because we don't know if apes are conscious. We don't know if rodents are conscious. We don't know if spiders are conscious. And, and we have no idea how to approach the problem. So I guess the answer really is that until we understand what it is about the brain that produces the conscious experience, whether it's the microtubules and the axons, or whether it's the connectivity, or whether it's one of the neuromodulators like orexin that's involved in wakefulness, that that's what you need. Until we answer that question, we can't, it, it's... But you think it's a scientific question? It's a scientific question. Is there a possibility that there has to be something other than science to answer the question of consciousness, whether that computer is conscious? No, science, science will answer that question. Science can answer almost any question, including most of the questions that people say science can't answer. Those are questions that science doesn't know how to ask yet. I mean, if you go back 2,000 years to a couple of Greeks by the shore in a thunderstorm, trying to understand what causes thunder and lightning, what kind of explanation besides a god could possibly explain thunder and lightning. Well, they're in a hopeless position. They don't know what creates sound waves. They don't know how the ear works to receive and interpret sound waves. They don't know about electricity to cause lightning. They don't know that electricity produces heat that causes gases to expand. I mean, they're 2,000 years away from being able to answer that question. But it's a simple scientific question. And I think consciousness is no different. It's just one that we don't know how to answer yet.